Well, the first kind of Polaroid cameras took roll film. I happen to have some here. Uh, roll film hasn't been made since, or the Polaroid roll film hasn't been made since 1992, I believe. And I think this box expired in 1981. If you can read it, it's kind of hard to. To see what it says, but I think it says April 1981. But anyway, uh, these cameras are folding bellows cameras. On the side here as you're focusing, you just set it for whatever distance you are away from your subject. Infinity up to three and a half feet. On the top here we have our exposure. I think one is the slowest and eight is the fastest, I believe. Um, that's about it. As far as like adjustments on this, there's not a whole lot. I think this is for, you know, I think this is for a flash, and you just set it for either regular or B for a bulb if you're using a flash. All right, you find it pulls out of the side here. Maybe there we go. And the back one folds up, and then there's your three window viewfinder. Also a tripod mount on the front there. Oops. Flip this around and open it up. So the lever pulls up. And it folds like that. I have already cleaned the rollers in here. Let's open up our film. Not the other end. There we go. So this is the Kodo since it's black and white film. The film itself and the directions. This is type 42 film. It's eight exposures. Okay, so let's open this up. I have no idea this is going to work. Okay, so I guess we need to stop. Do not enroll beyond this point. Okay, Let's see if we can put this in. So, by the way, this is the negative roll and this is the positive roll. And these work by, these work by exposing the negative roll first, and then when you pull the film out of the side of the camera, it pulls the negative through here across the roller and squeezes the negative onto the positive roll and transfers it over to the positive. Okay. Also lift up the cutter door here. Locked in. 
And we should be able to just pull this. I think anyway. Just. Aha. See, then it clicked. That's at the end. So we just put this down. And tear it off. And we've already got some waste paper. Okay, so that should be loaded. I think we are ready to take our first picture. Okay, so Tech Support Hog is joining us as our subject today. Got everything all set up here. If the camera will. That's the view through the viewfinder. Obviously, I'm not going to take a picture like this because it's way too close. You have to be at least three and a half feet away. And by the way, the shutter is this little button right here. Pull that for the shutter. So, I'm going to step back three and a half feet, take a picture, and see what we get. Now, I set this on four, just as a guess. I have no idea if that's the right setting. I was kind of going by the guide they have here for outdoor pictures. Of course, this is not outdoors, but I do have a lot of bright lights in here. Uh, they say when it's dark and soft shadows is a four, so I'm just kind of equating that to in here since it's obviously it's bright in here, but it's obviously not as bright as if I was out in the sun. So it's just a guess. We'll see if it works. So let me move my camera out of the way so I'll get that in frame. Gonna watch tech support hog there. Should we get at least three and a half feet away? Far enough away. I guess that's close enough. All right, so the picture is taken. Let's collapse this down a little bit to make it. All right, so I folded up the camera just to make it easier to uh, pull the film out. So the first thing we do is we push this little lever here and then we should be able to pull this out. Now we wait 15 seconds our 15 seconds has elapsed, and by the way, that is what it says on the paper here. Uh, 70 degrees and above normal development time is 15 seconds. So now we open up the back door here, and we peel And what a surprise, we have one little smudge. But that's only the first picture. And it's not 100% dried out, it's about 95% dried out. Which gives me some hope for the second picture. So I'll probably try a few more and just see what we get. Well, that's about the best we got out of that. All you can see there is my rolls of film on the table. And... Nothing else really came out, so I'm not sure what the deal is with this um, line down the middle there. Uh, that's as far as the developing uh, juices got, or what? I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, that was about as good as I guess we're going to get out of that. So, but that's how you, or I should say, that's a demonstration of the Polaroid roll film camera. Even though you can no longer get useful old film. I'm not sure if I mentioned this is the Polaroid model 95A. This is from 1954. Well, the second major type of Polaroid is the peel apart pack film Polaroid. The one you see in front of you is the model 100 which is the first in this series. Oh, it also came with a bunch of assorted uh, accoutrements such as the flash, timer, close-up kit, which includes a lens and a viewfinder attachment. This is 9 to 15 inches. 
With the normal lens on the camera, you can't get closer than four feet, I believe. Also have a portrait kit. This is a little bit further away. This is 19 to 42 inches. But it's the same kind of deal. There are two types of flash bulbs, M2, which is dimmer, and M3, which is brighter. So these are single use flash bulbs. When you use them, the steel will vaporize. It's the timer. So it's a plastic thing. So this, I believe, sets on top of the shutter button, and then you set the time, and then after the preset amount of time, it pushes the shutter button in automatically. You got print mounts. So just a sheet of cardboard. There's a, a bunch of them together here. You just peel off when you want to use one. You peel this off and stick your picture on. That was used for color prints because they had a tendency to curl. Color print mounter. So you peel off the stickiness from the or the, the paper from the sticky backing, slide it in underneath here, then you lay your print, align it, your print on this, and then press it down on top, pull it out, and it'll be perfectly aligned. Get the flash guy out. adjustable shield flash bulb in there and when you push this button pops out see if I can get it back in and there's a double-a battery in here and then when you pull the shutter it just connects the two contacts together and which sends the one and a half volts to the flash to vaporize that uh, steel wool. This is the film for the camera, Type 100C. Uh, this film is no longer made, but you can still get what's left in stock at places that sell it. This stuff expires in October, it looks like, of this year, so it's still in date. And we have the camera itself. Front folds down, viewfinder folds up, and the camera folds out the front, like so. This is the shutter that should always be cocked. When you push the shutter button, it shoots that up, and then you reset it like that. There's no film in here yet, so on the viewfinder, you have this right here is your focus. My camera focus. This is your focusing view hole, and that's your viewfinder view. So if you notice on the front, we have number one. This slides back and forth. And as it slides back and forth, it moves the camera in and out for focusing. So what you do is you look through. I'll show this how this is going to work. You look through there. Uh, so close. And you slide this back and forth. And see how there's like. This is going to work too well. Anyway, you're supposed to look through here. And when you're not in focus and in the, inside the little yellow square, there's going to be two, like double vision. And you slide this back and forth. You see how it kind of changes the double vision? It's really hard to do this. This is not going to focus on it. Anyway, the idea is you slide it back and forth and see how the double vision changes. And when you get rid of the double vision, you know you're in focus. I'm not sure if this is going to focus because it's probably too close. It's not four feet away, so it's not going to focus on that. But that's the idea anyway.
and you look through your viewfinder to take your picture. So to put the flash on, just simply clips on right here. It's not on yet. You have to push this lever in to release the back. Well, there we go. Of course, I did it off camera, but now it's on. You have to release this, and that releases the back to latch on. And then it plugs in right here on the side. You can hold the camera like this. Like so. And you're ready to go with your flash. But before we do that, let's load some film in this camera. Okay, so there's two components in the back of the camera. This side is the battery. It's a special 4.5 volt battery. Or you can actually um, take the battery holder out on this camera and use one of those little uh, three battery flashlight um, holders that come out of those little metal flashlights. You can put that in here instead of this battery because that's also 4.5 volts. But I got this battery because I have another similar camera to this where you can't take the battery holder out. And if you wanted to use the other battery pack, you'd actually have to physically cut it out, which I didn't want to do. So that's why I got the original battery. So latch on the bottom. And this opens up. Let's open our film. When you're doing this, you want to make sure you don't squeeze the film cartridge. That will ruin it. Each picture has a set of um, I'm putting this in the right way. Yes, I am. Uh, each picture has its own pack of developing chemicals in it. So if you squeeze the pack, you are ejecting those developing juices before they're ready. So we put it in like this. They want the hole on the front. Get it back out. Look out. You better not take it back out. Anyway, there's a hole on the front that lines up with the um, view. Well, I don't know which one to call it, but the, the bellows opening lines up with the hole on the front of the package, and the back is closed. And make sure this is facing this way because that's the size you're going to pull out of. So we should be able to close this up now. Open the front. Now this tab should be available. I should be able to, make sure that's latched. Should be able to, let's back this up a little bit. Okay, I should be able to pull this tab. Let's retry. All right, I've got a better handle on the tab now. Maybe a little too. There we go. Pull this out. My first tab here is ready. So we should be ready to take a picture now. Okay, so this is uh, part of your exposure setting. Uh, we are using the flash, so we want to be on this setting. You see the blue tab is there. To change that, you slide this blue tab back and forth. Of course, if we're using the flash, you want to be on flash mode, color film. And then on the front, there's a little dial here for our film speed. So you can see this says 75, that's the setting for color. I believe there also is a 300 speed black and white, but we're using color film. So I figured we would put the portrait kit on this, try to get up a little bit closer to our subject. That comes with the lens. Which just sits on here. Like that. One thing I also forgot to mention. 
We also have a lighten or darken control here to set the shutter speed. So if we take a picture and it's too dark or too light, you can adjust this. We should be able to adjust it. There we go. Leave it in the middle for now. And then this assembly clips on over top of the viewfinder. Like so, and that will change our focus and viewfinder settings. Let's see if it'll let me see the focus. Yeah, it's not gonna let you see the focus, but and also in here we have this. I'm not sure if this goes over the flash. Use diffuser, yes, so that will go on somehow. There we go. All right, so now all we need is a subject to photograph. Okay, it's Tech Support Hog is joining us now. Need to focus on her. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work very well at all. First of all, can we see with, there we go, we can see her through the viewfinder. Can we focus on her? No. All right, I'm gonna have to set the focus up myself real quick here. Maybe I'm too close. This is the 19 to 42 inches, so yeah. Might still be too close even back here. That looks pretty well. It's hard to tell. You got a, a little bit smaller focusing area on this, on the other one. I guess that's in focus. Of course, now it's focused for back here, so I have to come back here. Let me move up closer to the camera and see if I can focus from here. All right, I think that's pretty good. So I'll let you guys see through the viewfinder. So let me see the focus. So, um, we've got focus, our flash is cocked, should be ready to go. So we just take the picture, we cock the flash, and then we pull this out of the side here. Maybe. Jeez. There we go. I don't know why, this seems stiffer than the last time. Anyway, you pull that out, then this pops out. And then we pull it out in one swift motion. And let it sit for, let it sit for uh, 90 seconds. If you look at the tab here, it is about 77 degrees. So let it sit for 90 seconds. Okay, it's been about 90 seconds. Pick this up and just peel our picture right off the back. And of course, because I was looking through the camera viewfinder, I completely missed my target. So I was trying to focus this through the, I was looking through the camera viewfinder through my camera. So apparently it's not, not quite exactly in range, but focus isn't too bad on it. So I managed to get the focus right. Um, and then, so this is taken with the close the portrait kit. So this would be our portrait tech support hog if she were in frame. Um, and the other kit lets you get even closer than this. 
So normally without the kits, you'd have to be at least four feet away. So it's nice to get up, be able to get up closer to things. But anyway, I like I like using this camera. I have another one just like it, the Model 230 that I've been using too. I like these kind, but unfortunately the film is no longer made for them. So it costs about thirty-five dollars for a box of film, what's still left, and you only get ten pictures in there. So three dollars and fifty cents a picture is a little expensive just for having fun, but. I think it's cool. And there you have it, that is the, the taking a picture on the second type of Polaroid, the Pula Park, Pula Park Pack Film. I probably just got developing juices on my table. You can see there's the negative. And there's some developing juices right there. Those get squeezed apart. When you pull it to the when you pull it out of the camera, it squeezes the juices, smears them across the image that would develop. But anyway. That is the Polaroid pack film type camera. This is the Polaroid One Step Plus. This is basically the last um, main type of Polaroid cameras. This is the electronic kind that I think all you have to do is press the button to take your picture and it spits the picture out the front. Take a look at this. On the side there's a lever. Pops it open. That's where the film goes in. This uses the SX70 type film. See it in there. Uh, the film pack itself contains a battery which drives the which powers the camera and drives the motor for ejecting the film. Uh, this has a, the flash bar on top. This also takes uh, four AA batteries to use the flash bar. Uh, you can use the camera without the flash bar. This just clips off. And then you use the camera like this, then it runs off the battery in the battery pack. I think it runs off the battery in the battery pack even if you have the flash on. I think the flash is just, the batteries in the flash are just for powering the flash. Little counter there for how many um, pictures are left in the pack. Of course it's zero now because I don't have a pack in it. Our viewfinder on the back. On the front is the, um, the viewfinder, the lens and the light dark adjustment. I just have it set on normal and inside there is the eye that senses how much exposure time they give it and then adjust accordingly how do you set that for a lighter picture or a darker picture. So this takes the SX70 type film which luckily they do still make. I think they're making it, they're going to keep making it for a while. So made by the Impossible Project or what used to be the Impossible Project. They bought all of the equipment from the Polaroid factory. If I open this the wrong way. They bought all the equipment from the Polaroid factory. There we go. And started making the SX-70-600 and they make their own type of film too. Got some directions there. Doesn't really have any directions on how to load the film though. So I guess we'll just Stick it in according to that. Insert film this side up and this way. Is that supposed to take that sticker off? Let me read the directions first. See if I can find them anyway. There are no directions on how to load the film, but it looks like this is just supposed to be for you to be able to pull it out when it's done. So I'll leave that on now. Uh, you notice there's a spot on the roller there, so let's see if we can clean that off. Let's use some rubbing alcohol here. And we'll just spot on the other one, roller too.
Alright, I think those would be pretty good now. They look pretty clean. So let's close the door and see what happens. Not in all the way. There we go. Alright. Did something. Got our door out. I assume this is ready. It tells me I have a little focus on that. I'll have to take the flashback off. Tells me I have 10 pictures left, even though there's only 8 in the pack. But I guess when this camera was made, they had 10 in the pack. So we'll turn the flash on. I'll have to let that charge up. So it'll probably take a while. Okay, so as you can see, the flash is ready. Um, on the front here, there are three settings for the flash. I'm assuming that means no flash, always flash, and the middle one is automatic. Oops. So when the middle one is automatic, I have no idea. I can't find a manual or anything for this. So we're just going to put it on the middle one and see what happens. So we've got a picture subject there. Uh, then you have to be four feet away to take a picture. And additionally, I was reading in the little instruction book here, you're supposed to shield it for the first six minutes. So after it spits it out, I guess you have to hide it under something to shield it from light, put it in a drawer, and see what we get. So I'll back up four feet, take a picture, and see what happens. Cameras in the way. All right, let's cut it out. Put it in the drawer real quick, and we'll check it in six minutes. Well, it didn't come out too bad. I mean, it's a little brighter than it could be, but not bad overall. So. That's just about all I have to say about this uh, SX70 type. It's definitely a lot easier to take pictures on this than on the older style film pack ones. So, all in all, not bad. It's kind of cool. So, if you enjoyed this little look at the three main different types of Polaroid cameras from roll film, pack film, to one step pack film. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.